Well, hey friends, welcome back to the Barefoot Forge channel and welcome to chapter two of the Doka I got in Poland. This thing's a piece of crap. In this chapter, we're gonna learn a lot. We're gonna learn that the rear brakes were ruined. We're gonna ruin the injection pump. Oh, what else are we gonna do? We're gonna replace the ruined CV joints. We're gonna use a large hammer. We're gonna snap the injection pump in half. Uh, then we're gonna receive a very professionally wrapped package from Latvia. That's how you know it's good. Then we'll rebuild the ruined shifter and we'll find out what else is ruined on this car. This is a fun chapter. I think you're gonna enjoy it. First breakdown on the Doka. I've put something like 12 kilometers on it, which I don't know what that means. No one really does. Now the pedal up there seems to not affect, well, it doesn't move. So luckily I brought all my tools with me and we're gonna fix it in this parking lot. Okay. I think I unbroke down because I had some tools right here. So it had vibrated out so that this couldn't move at all. But now this moves. Next up, we're gonna try to make it so it doesn't smoke so much. I talked to my buddy Carl, he's an expert on these things. And he said, I need to get some of this liquid Molly diesel purge. And uh, I'm gonna take the fuel line off that goes right into the injector pump and toss it right in this little dented can and run it until the can's almost out and then shut the car off. And probably gonna make an enormous amount of smoke, let it sit overnight and then try it again. It like that, I don't know. Maybe that's correct. Let's well, these brake lines are in, you know, deplorable shape, but fascinatingly, it's just these two all the way up to the T and they actually came off. So I'll just replace these two and the soft lines and stuff up there. This is an easy job. Well, this brake line broke, no surprise, while I was taking it off. It's in horrible shape. And luckily we made a new one out of the copper nickel stuff that will never rust away, is easy to bend and took 10 minutes. So I love this stuff. This is a forever replacement. I'm taking some rear brakes apart and checking them out. Shoes look new, but like, look at this. These have hex nuts on them. This should be a spring clip. So there's like a bolt. Yeah, there's a bolt all the way through the nut on the backside. That's some crazy. Uh, these have some moisture in the boot. So that means this cylinder's no good. We'll go ahead and replace it while we're in here. Well, that was broken off. So, you know, that was gonna make bleeding these a nightmare. So at least we're replacing that. Luckily, our friends at Go Westy have these ATE ones. These have always been good to me. So, thanks, Go Westy. Let's put them on. This little guy is very important. This is a spring clip for a rear brake. The ones from the kit are significantly shorter, so they don't work. And we only have two used ones, so that kind of sucks. Someone needs to manufacture these. There is a shortage of these. Yeah, starboard side here, we're getting some significant aeration holes around here. It's, it's definitely losing some integrity, but it's got enough. It'll do. At some point, it'll need a backing plate though. We couldn't find any of these pins. We went ahead and used the non-factory bolts again. So there's a bolt going through there and there. Oh, the brakes are done. Well, the rear brakes. The throttle cable is attached by this piece of safety wire and uh, also doesn't go to full throttle, and uh, it's just, everything's wrong. So we're gonna take that all off. Apparently this clip is super important. It holds the that on. So we're gonna just use this and the old throttle cable for Look now. Look at this. This is a lot of juice coming out. So I'm gonna replace these axles because they seem to, uh, well, they make some clicky clacky sounds. So we're gonna put a new axle on there, but I bet we have to replace a seal back there too. We'll see when we get the axle off, but I bet you we got to do a seal. Well, we're going to replace this exhaust uh, header. It's in horrible shape. So we got these two bolts off nicely, but these guys, they're not going to play nice. So I don't know, but this header is, uh, you know, it's just made of soup cans and rust holes. So it's not a good one. And we got well, a new one. It's definitely time to replace some fuel lines. Um, these all need to be clear so you can see if there's any air bubbles in them. Putting some Whoa. new axles on. I got these at AutoZone. They're the Dura Last Gold. And we're going to pack them full of red and tacky. Put that in there. That should be good. Looking these over, they've got this little gaskety dude. But the little gaskety dude's like critical because there's actually a recess here. I've never seen that. So I guess we're actually going to use the little gaskety dude. Okie dokie. So putting these new ones on and I put new washers under here. They're a little different. And I'm not getting quite the same thread length as I have over there. And that's a concern because, you know, there just aren't enough threads. 
So I don't know, I'm gonna run it anyway, and when they all snap off, that's gonna be why. It's because these washers are too thick, these bolts are the same length, but, um, or something else is wrong. Maybe this is thicker. Oh, it's thicker. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing it now. I got this on Amazon. These are awesome. I'm going to add this to the inline. So if, uh, you know, the pump goes dead or whatever, you just give it a couple, <laughs> few of those. I'll post the link. Yeah, boy. Well, here's a super fascinating twist of events. I've spent way too much time trying to put these axles on. It is not going well. Two of the bolts will not go in. And then I remembered, oh, I dealt with this on Dan's bus. There's a broken bolt in there. Sure enough, there's two broken bolts on this side. So we got to bust the big nut off, pop the whole uh, stub axle, whatever you call that out, and then figure out how to get those things out. But I think we can do that. Let's just, let's just get this off. The big nut's kind of scary to do. It's the big nut. It's a big nut. It is a 46 millimeter. And uh, I have seen people fight, 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 fight to get this off. Here we go. It's not even hard. I've never had a problem getting that nut off with this tool. It's insane. Fair enough. Two broken bolts. Those two. See them back there? Now, because they're not under any tension, these will come right out. A pair of vice grips on either side. This should move real easy. This only added about 30 minutes total to the job. It's pretty easy to do if you have the right tool. Seriously, I was able to get these out entirely with my fingers. It's not bad at all because there's no tension. So when in doubt, just take this thing out. Don't try drilling these things out in place or anything. They come right out. I actually drove this car to work and back yesterday and it worked flawlessly. I pulled it right into the garage and now it won't start at all. No starter clicks, no sounds at all. It's still been smoking a lot, leaking a lot of fuel, so we're going to dive in deep, pulling the injection pump off, which is terrifying because I have no idea how to do that. So we're going to have to take the timing belts off and the injection pump off, and then we're going to like rebuild the injection pump or replace some seals, hopefully find the leaks. And I don't know. I really honestly don't know. I'm just going to get in way over my head, make a series of bad decisions, and then figure out how to put it back together. For the life of me, I cannot get straight on these two bolts because of the bumper here. I could take it off, but I have a hammer. About a ticking time bomb. Look at the crack in that timing belt. That is absolutely going to fail luckily we're replacing it wow well, i got the cam cover off and valve cover off and these cams look to be in really nice shape no no significant wear um everything looks good under here this gasket's rock solid so it's definitely gonna polish we don't know so this this is a piece of red and it seems to align with this small piece of red is, does this align to anything up there no no just vaguely this to relatively that so I think this is probably important, but it's as many teeth off from that as it is. That's off. That sucked. That was a process. Anyway, uh, take your injection pump off sometimes. It's recreational. It looks like it was leaking from down here and probably this main seal here. So I don't know. What we'll, we'll just put some of the seals in. I don't know that we'll do all of them, but apparently this one's common and that one's pretty common too. And I don't know how this works. So I'm scared I'm going to take it apart and then never put it back together. But luckily these aren't available. So if I ruin it, it's ruined. And then I have a problem. Let's clean it up with a little super clean. We'll just give it a little. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm real into it now. I honestly have no idea how this thing works, but I'm learning a lot, and this washer was loose inside of there. I'm hoping there's another one. Another I've taken this whole thing apart, and I honestly still have no idea what it does, but at least I have all of these parts laid out and an empty container of alcohol. Um, there's these things, and then there's those things. I think that's where the washer went, but also, I don't know what that does, and I'm just gonna like, yeah. I honestly thought it was going really well and I was uh, putting things back together and then I dropped it and now nothing moves. Like of the things I didn't take apart, those don't move. So that's bad. Hell shit, I broke that shaft off. So this whole pump's ruined. Well that sucks cause where am I gonna get one? What? 
that wasn't broken and now it's super broken. I broke whatever this is in half while rebuilding the pump and now the pump is totally ruined. So I'm putting it on bags and mailing it to a friend who might have a this and can has experience with a that. So I don't well, know. I bought this 1Z engine off a guy in West Virginia and uh, it's out of a 97 Passat. We know it to have about 200,000 miles on it. Uh, he drove it up the driveway and then took it out to do a future swap. So maybe we'll put it in the Doka. So we'll see. this is the harness that goes with it. This is a fully modified harness by, uh, who makes this? What was uh, S and P. This is a fully modified S and P harness to run this one Z easily in a Vanagon. So hopefully this will be fully electronic and plug right the in. The pump is back. I had to send it on a little trip for a while to get it all rebuilt because I snapped it in half. A buddy of mine who has experience and has taken one of these apart had the replacement part and was able to put it back together properly. We are now confident in it, which is a wild thing. So in theory, uh, this should be good. If we have issues, it's no longer the injection pump. It's everything else. So I don't know how to put this in. Let's figure it Everything's out. Everything's off and I've turned all the pulleys. So now nothing's set relative to itself. So I'm just cleaning things. I got these cool brushes that go on the end of a drill. Got them on Amazon. I'll put the link. Look at that. This is a cool thing. I needed this. There's a bunch of different sizes. Get the vibe I should replace this thing. Because it's like in horrible condition. Never mind. I looked it up. You can't get one. This doesn't exist. So we're going to put it back well, on. Well, I learned a lot about how timing on a diesel works. And how a timing belt works. And how all of this goes together. Because I've screwed it up many times. So now... It might be right. Basically, we take the, the this thing and we put the this thing in the back of the that thing and then this whole thing can move a little bit, like a distributor on a, on a gasoline motor. And we have to rotate by hand until this is at the right spot and then we lock it down and then that... And the right spot is one millimeter, whatever that means. At one point This is pretty confusing to learn, but I've been through it a million times now, and I am now very confident that this is set relative to that, which is set relative to that. And then this thing, this is how you set the timing, is set to the performance output of one millimeter, whatever that means. Anyway, let's hook up the rest of the stuff, and let's see if it explodes. Now we got to rebuild this. This is the LDA. This provides fuel enrichment when the turbo does turbo things. So when you need more gas to go faster, this does it. There's a diaphragm in here. It's broken because it doesn't do things right. So I got this kit from Germany, and it has a this. We need a this. But to take it apart, we need these German instructions and these tiny bolts. I think we cut the whole thing apart, and then we... I don't know. This is going to be fun. I'm going to find out what's inside of that. Well, that's what's in there. See, that diaphragm's all kinds of screwed up, and that's probably why it wasn't doing diaphragm things. We'll put a new one in. I think we cut this off, throw a small thread in there, just make it up as we go. It's going to be fun. That wasn't too hard. We'll see if it works. Solved all of the problems, probably. And we've cranked it over till the battery went dead and had to charge it back up four times. We now have fuel coming out at at least three of the injectors um, with them cracked. We're seeing bubbles and stuff, so it's not, like, good fuel yet, but... I hooked them all back up, and now on this next charge, we're gonna we're gonna give it the full send. I bet you she starts. Go for it. Ready? Yep. I got this professionally wrapped package in the mail from Latvia. That's how you know it's good. These are the proper badges: the Volkswagen for this side, and transporter for this side. Got them from Latvia. Let's put it on. Drove good. Drove real good. A lot of, uh, not a lot of power just off idle though. There's a hesitation. So we need to give it more of the enrichment screw because this pump was made out of two different pumps because I broke my pump in half and the other pump might not be the right pump. So the screw's not right relative to that. That makes sense to me. So I was told to break the collar off so I can screw the screw in further to give it more fuel. That makes a lot I'm of talking sense. Talking about this collar right here on this little guy. Got to get it off so we can send that screw a little deeper. Well, the wipers don't seem to work right. And I looked at the relays and there isn't a wiper relay in there. So I can't believe they work at all, but let's put one of these in. Maybe that fixes things. 
That's crazy. Weird. This has like <laughs> even a crappier windshield wiper option. The stock doesn't go down at all, so you can't put it in intermittent mode. And you just have low speed and high speed. There's no other speeds. That's insane. We need to retrofit better things okay, to this. Okay, wiper time. Taking off this 18-inch wiper. These suck. Putting on this 21-inch wiper on this side and a 19 on that side. That's a that's a top quality hack. The Go Westy guys have been doing that for years. These are crappy ones I bought at Walmart, but they'll they'll do it. Uh, it gives you a little better viewing area, and you always need new blades. Well, it still shifts horribly. It's not necessarily reliable yet. Um, you know, none of the doors locks work. There's a lot of issues with this car still. So let's proceed to putting a stereo in because, well, it's just more fun that way. Now, this vehicle came factory equipped with probably close to nothing. There does appear to be one speaker mounted in the center of the dash. I'm excited to see how they wired that in. And uh, there is some kind of weird radio in here that doesn't fit right. So we're going to rip all that crap out and rewire things to run this Pioneer unit. These new units are pretty slick. They're very narrow or very, uh, they're not very deep. So it doesn't do CDs and stuff, but it, it'll fit right in there. It's very nice. Um, let's put so, it in. So the removal of this could be tricky. I think what we need to do is just... No, no, that was pretty easy. You just got to rip it hard. Ooh. That looks wrong. We were taking a test drive and we found a case of white claws on the side of the road. So, you know, ain't no laws when you got the claws. Let's just throw these in the back here. Nature is very giving. Yeah, let's rebuild the shifter because it's, it's horrible. So let's take it all apart. I pulled the rubber up thinking I needed to take it off to get the shifter stuff, but you don't on this. Look at what's under there. That's pretty good. I expected it to be in way worse condition. That's pretty good. Let's go ahead and uh, take the spare tire well off because we're never putting the spare tire back up here and it's kind of in the way. We're going to do something different soon. So let's just take it off completely. We don't need it. Look at the size of that dent on this frame, this frame cross member. It is, it is profound. I mean, I don't think this does it justice. It, uh, there's no way this car could maintain an alignment. I'm probably going to have to cut this off a donor and weld it in. I mean, it's, it's got to be six inches that way. It's quite a lot. I got this all off. And a few things we can see on the shifter here. The little tabs, these are super important. This one's kind of there, but this one's almost totally missing. And that accounts for a lot of our shifting issues. Look at all that play. This is definitely in horrible condition. So we'll rebuild all this. Wow. That's as bad as any I've ever seen. up this box and there's supposed to be another ear here, I think. Um, that's missing completely. That's super putting broken. in this 1991 uh, Synchro stock instead of the 1989 turbo diesel stock. And I can see the bend is different a little bit. So <clears throat> I don't know. This might be very undesirable and put things at the wrong spot, but... I'm also not rebuilding this. I'm just packing it with grease. I cleaned it real good because it's in good enough shape and this car is a piece of crap. So we're just gonna use what we've got and put it Our together. friends at Go Westy make this great shifter tab repair kit. So you get these little dudes and some epoxy and you replace them and it makes things good. Let's okay, put them on. Back here at the shifter, a couple notable things. This is all completely wrong for this car. An 89 would not have had this early style shifter. This is like US spec air cooled or 8283 diesel. So somewhere in the middle of this shaft, they cut it in half and welded the old half on the back with the new half on the front. So this is all very wrong. You can see things like this mount because this mount isn't correct to put, this transmission should not fit in this car. You can see they extended it by an inch and welded it with a stick welder. They did some very creative garbage like that. Also, you can see that uh, the factory screws are all broken off on this side of this mount. 
So they just sort of drilled in some new ones. These are just like some sheet metal screws, some self tappers holding the whole thing together. So this portion of things, including this actual transmission, is incredibly wrong for this vehicle. So I think this has already been completely custom made with the whatever on the end because somehow this is supposed to go on there, but this doesn't go on there because this is a this. Anyway, whatever this rubber compound is, I'm sure the fine people of Poland did a great job manufacturing this with just a drill and some sandpaper. That's what it looks like. The problem we're running into back here is that this guy that we took out is so ruined that like it's totally square in this direction. And it looks like in order to, I don't know, probably deal with sloppy shifting, they squeeze the metal tabs in. So now this guy doesn't fit in. So I have to like either spread that or reuse this square Look at that. This is so ruined. Everything on this car is completely totaled. Well, I think I got the shifter shifting. So the thing back there, I uh, I just took it and I, I did bending. I just bent. I bent to open because I think they bent to close. So I bent to open. Now it's open. I was able to shove the other ball in there. It's way too tight. It definitely, you feel it up here, but it'll wear in. I don't know. I'm going to put some miles on it. Uh, lots of grease. It's together. It feels like all the gears are there, but you don't know until you drive it. We'll find out tomorrow. Today I pulled the muffler and more importantly, the uh, oil pan off. The oil pan's been leaking and I want to go through it and I want to deal with everything. I don't want this car to leak fluids. I want all maintenance to be done. I want to abuse the crap out of this car with confidence. So we're pulling the oil pan so it doesn't drip. There she is. It took a long time to get off. There's about a bajillion and a half bolts. It looks like the old seal was made almost entirely out of RTV. And that's probably why everything sucks. Um, we'll have to clean that up. That won't be fun. There's the oil pan. We took the oil pan off. Let's replace that gasket. We'll go on. Every part I'm taking off this car, I'm trying to make super clean so that it doesn't keep attracting crap. We're gonna put this back on with this more modern windage tray. This is like a better gasket from a 1.8T. Uh, these leak less, and you can put these on either directly or with a few basic modifications. So that's the game plan. Next up in the Doka project, we're gonna put a diesel, super rare diesel tachometer in there. So we're gonna pull this out of this 1980, I don't know, nine, two year only turbo diesel Jetta I want to know how fast I'm going because I'm definitely going to blow up this engine. I have no concept at all of what it's capable of, so we need a tack. Well, this is a little more involved than I thought it was, but you know what? I'm just ripping them all apart and ruining everything. What could possibly go wrong? Switching out the this, so it's got the that for the glow now plug. We're going to use some of this Permatex anaerobic gasket maker, just a thin smearing on the schmear there. Both sides should make it nice and tight and uh, good for Just an example a good example of some of what we're dealing with on this car. This is an exhaust bracket, which has clearly been cut in half and welded back together with a stick welder. And then this isn't the correct mount, but to get it to mount at this angle, they filled all that in with stick weld. And because it kept breaking at that crack, they just added this, that. Anyway, um, it does function, so I'm gonna do nothing which is the right decision. I replaced this strutty boy uh, with one from McMaster. It's not quite right, but it's pretty good. It's the right lifty strength, so I can, you know, she goes down and she goes up, but she doesn't go up on her own, you know? That's pretty good. It's like 20 bucks. Getting all caught up on the maintenance things here on the Doka, and the next thing is dealing with the gearbox. The gearbox leaks, and it's been leaking out of the drive flanges for probably a long time. I'm not gonna fix that yet, but, uh, it's sort of a more involved job, but that means it's probably never really had its oil changed, just uh, just topped off and stuff. So we went ahead and pulled the plug, and you can see that it's got a bit of a, a bit of hair on it, a little more than than we desire. So we'll clean that up into a landing strip and put some fresh juice in. A little bit of hair is fine, but well, that's a little bit bushy. That transmission's probably ruined. Let's put some Swepco in. Well, friends, sometimes in life, things get done twice. Um, you know, there's no shame in it. We all make mistakes. 
Sometimes you're working on a car and you think you know what you're doing and you get to take it back out. You get to do it twice. It happens. Anyway, the injection pump is out again. And uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about timing it and whatnot. So it should go better this time. And we've got to make a couple small tweaks to the adjust, uh, injection pump while it's out. And then it should be better than well, ever. Chapter 2 was a fun chapter. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go ahead and leave a comment on what your favorite part was. What your favorite thing we ruined was. Or found out was ruined. Because those comments drive engagement and that's important. Anyway, chapter three is gonna be pretty cool. Chapter three, we're gonna bolt a bunch of frivolous crap onto this car, which makes it look cooler even if it doesn't function well. And in chapter three, oh, who knows what could happen. I could still even end up having this mustache. We'll see. Stay tuned.